Hey guys, it's Crazy Comic Lady here, and this is a commission I did for Kitty Catche here on YouTube and on Instagram. And she asked me to do her a picture of Sailor Moon in A4 size. And I wasn't sure when I was sketching this if I should do it as a lineless art piece of work or if I should put line art in it. And Kitty Catche basically said uh, I could do whatever I wanted, so I decided that I would do it as a a lineless art piece as that's what I've been experimenting with most recently and when I do the line art pieces I I worry about like it not popping out of the page so I go in with very dark purples and I actually started with BV04 and I think that was actually too dark I think I should stop worrying about it being like not popping out and and do a lighter shade next time because I don't think it really needs a BV04 but when I do lineless art, an awful lot of colours go into the skin. So I think it also had uh, BVO, or BV00, BV00, BV quadruple O, uh, EO4, E50, E51, EO2, E00, E quadruple O, and then it had R20 and RV02 for like the blushy bits. And yeah, so a lot of a lot of colours end up like going into the skin because I'm like, how do I make stuff like look defined and pop out? So I end up like going mad with different colours and oh, I am so disappointed with how the nose came out. Noses have always been one of like my major weaknesses anyway and I guess doing these kind of uh, lineless art pieces you kind of need to put in like lots of colours to try and make the noses pop out and it just, it looks fat and like blobby and that kind of really annoyed me and um, later on in the video you'll see that I I went back and I tried to I tried to like add to it and that was like a couple days later and I wish I hadn't done that because I think I made it worse <laughs> but um, I think the eyes came out a lot better because with my previous pieces I've been like struggling with the eyes on lineless art pieces so I took like a lot of care with this one to try and get those eyes to look okay so this time when I was tracing it onto the marker paper I used Canson Bristo um, board for, for my art pieces anyway when I was tracing it onto it uh, after I traced it I went over the eyes with a black Prismacolor pencil just so that you could so that I could kind of see more where the eyes were so I could be careful not to like screw up and to keep with like the outline of the eyes so I did that and then I decided I went under the eyes with like the dark skin colours and then I went and I made like the the eyelids kind of pop out a bit by using a really dark blue I'm not entirely sure what I used I think it was probably Oh, I want to say it was either B39 or B26, possibly, um, as a guess. And so I went over carefully with the with the blue, uh, and then I added in eyelashes with the blue as well. To, and they also when you do that they look kind of clumpy. Cause it's very difficult to get very fine lines with using a marker. So then I went back in with a multi liner to pick out like bits of the eyelashes. And then I added like little white dots all around like the eyelashes and everything to make her eyes look kind of sparkly. And then I added lots of like little white dashes and everything like into the the iris and the pupil and everything to try and make like the eyes are trying I was trying to make the eyes like the focal point and that was like the the one thing I was trying trying to take the most care of. It's like I want this picture to have decent eyes. Although if you look really carefully, they are slightly wonky. And I did notice that with the sketch, but I didn't, I didn't fix it because I was kind of like, it doesn't look that bad. And then when I coloured it, it kind of looks worse. And I was trying to fix that nose, but the more I was trying to fix it, the darker it was getting, and the more kind of, I don't know, I ah, uh, it was bugging me so much. Um, later on, like off camera, because I did this over like three or four different days to try and finish this picture because it was taking me so long as well uh, lineless art even though you like you don't have the inking time you end up with a lot more coloring time because of trying to like make sure like the edges are very you have to be very careful when you're coloring it to make sure nothing bleeds over otherwise you're gonna have a pain when you're coloring stuff and it was better to like start on 
like the bottom layer first and kind of uh, build your way up so start with the skin and then uh, make sure like the the top layer stuff gets done last like the staff her pink moon staff stick rod moon rod is that right I'm showing my lack of Sailor Moon knowledge now but yeah Kitty Catche asked me to do to do this rod in in the picture she wanted it in the picture so yeah I had to look up references for that but yeah I was doing it over several days and off camera I actually I I changed the mouth a little bit I like added to it and made it slightly more to it on the right hand side so that it I was wondering if maybe it was like the mouth was making it look like it was making the nose look like it was like wrong more perhaps when I was doing like the blue of her top I started with uh, purples because I was kind of I wasn't sure like where the like the highlights and the darker shading bit should go so I kind of mapped it out with the purple first when I was doing the the blue of her shirt um which I I could have like saved myself time and not bothered because it was kind of obvious where shadows went anyway but I did after I'd coloured it all blue I went back over it with purple anyway to try and add I don't know more tones um, and when I was doing like the white bits the white of her her shirt which I always start when I colour whites I always start with purple anyway because if you start with just grey it always looks like really flat so I always uh, do like grey shading with purples anyway and I actually I didn't do it but I meant to put pink in it as well to like because I was always thinking I would do like a pink pastel background so I was planning on putting pink in the in her like shirt so that it would like reflect the background a bit but I didn't end up doing that in the end but yeah this picture ended up just taking so long in the end anyway but um when I was doing like the the gold staff rod stick thing uh i i was really struggling to get it to look gold like the gold bits like the pink i think turned out all right but the gold i was just struggling with like what's what's a good gold like what color should i use for gold and that was really hard and then like after i'd hike half finished i was like i should have started with purple purple would have been a good color to have like built on um, just as the shading and then the tones and the gold reflecting this I should have started with purple but I didn't um, but never mind I also I was putting like so many layers trying to get the colors in that in that staff thing right that my marker was going really weird I was using Y28 which is kind of my default dark goldy blonde color that I use for everything but it was like going really weird and I don't know if that's just because I put too many layers down or because the marker's actually going weird because I've been having trouble with and I don't know if anyone else has been having this trouble but the 25th Copic anniversary set that came out I don't know a few years ago um I've been having so many so many problems with that set as in the nibs are actually disintegrating uh, mostly it's those fine bullet point nibs but they're literally they've disintegrated they're they're gooey they're sticky and they're like breaking off as well it's like it's so weird and it's also happening on some of my brush nibs as well in that set um, which I can replace the brush nibs that was easy because I just it's easy to get hold of them in this country but it's like almost impossible to get a hold of the, the bullet nibs in the UK I'd have to import them and then it's really expensive and it's not worth it so I don't know if like the issue I was having with that gold marker was was because of the marker itself or just because I was putting too many layers on but it's it's getting that nasty sticky feeling and I know like the bullet nib on that pen is also disintegrated as well but yeah so I really struggled with the hair because of she's got that gold tiara thing and it's kind of like oh there's so much gold how do I make stuff like kind of pop out of the page here so I I kind of ended up mistakenly I it was an error in judgment I put some like fine liner multi liner ink into the hair and I was like that is really stupid after I'd done it because it just threw off the whole lineless look but I was trying to get those strands of hair to pop out against the tiara and it was like a really dumb thing so I ended up like going over them with like darker browns and then I ended up adding uh, white streaks 
over where I'd put like the multi-liner bits in to hide hide that error of judgment so it kind of you don't see it in the final picture luckily um so I saved I saved myself with that mistake but yeah it's always it's always fun like adding uh white highlights into the hair of blonde hair because it it just flows really nicely it's if you try and add white highlights into dark hair I really struggle because it just looks like it's popping out too much it doesn't have that nice subtle tone to it so yeah so I really struggle with light blonde hair on on characters like trying to like add definition to it like I had trouble with that Arista picture Ariel's sister that I did um, that I struggled with and this one I struggled with but also because I had all the other gold stuff and her gold earrings and it was like ah, uh, it's really hard without line art so then I ad added in my chalk pastel background and uh, when I finish the background I always go around the character with a, a uh, an eraser just to kind of lift like put a border around around the character and it lifts off a lot of the pastel as well so that it like that way if you've like screwed up and you've got pastel like all over the character you can it still doesn't matter because as soon as you it just erases straight off and also when I was doing the hair as well I know she's supposed to have like um buns around her like red bits but instead I tried to like put my own flair into it and I tried to make them look like kind of braided plaits around it instead um just for I don't know my own personal choice I decided to do that so yeah uh I'm not sure there's much else to say about the picture I have uh finally gotten into Sailor Moon Crystal it's like oh it's so much better without all the filler stuff that the original 90s one had it's like wow there's actually a story to this now so I'm actually finally starting to enjoy Sailor Moon and I can actually like there's a story to it and I was enjoying it and I was uh I did some fan art of uh, Queen... is it Beryl? Uh, I can't remember now. <laughs> but yeah, I, I did some fan art of her that I might I might finish at some point. Do some more, more Sailor Moon fan art since I'm getting into it now. But I really... Uh, I was starting to really enjoy it because each episode it was kind of making me want to watch the next one. And that hasn't happened to me for a long time. I haven't had an anime that's like made me want to watch the next episode and then the next one and then the next one before. So that was... I'm enjoying it. It was fun. So anyway, has anyone noticed the error in the picture yet? And I didn't actually notice it till I was like nearly finished. But the little moon crescent thing on her necklace is round the wrong way. It's supposed to be like up, up the other way. And that kind of annoys me. But never mind. I'm surprised that no one on Instagram actually like picked up on that and told me about it. But anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed your picture, Kitty Catchay. And thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys all soon. Bye.